Inorganic qualitative analysis is the part of chemistry practical curriculum of undergraduate and postgraduate courses of almost all the universities. A fundamental concept of chemistry, which is the basis of the inorganic qualitative analysis, is taught in this video by using an unconventional student-friendly method teaching chemistry through videos. Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Chemphilic. I am Dr. Malada Sharma, a retired professor of St. Pius 10th degree and PG College for Women, Hyderabad. My 30 years long journey as a chemistry teacher for the undergraduate and postgraduate students made me to realize that majority of the students have a phobia and repulsive attitude towards chemistry. I believe that the mindset of the students can be changed if we can present the topics in an easy, grasping and enjoyable manner. In the videos of this channel, I am going to teach different topics of chemistry through riddles. The primary objective for making this series of videos is to generate interest in chemistry among the students and making a wider spread of this teaching learning model for the benefit of the students across the globe. Hope I'll receive the support and encouragement from the viewers to fulfill my objective. Now let's start the start video, reading number one, which is on the screen. I am silvery white solid, capable of boosting your immunity. While in contact with mineral acid, I generate a gas that is lighter than air. People try to pair me with sulfide. While our combination is favored in alkaline medium, one should not add acid during our combination. The primary question is, who am I? The other questions are, which gas is evolved and why? Third one, what compound is formed during my combination with sulfide? Last one, why my combination is favored in alkaline medium but inhibited in acid medium? Students might have guessed the answer of the primary questions. Let's see the answer. Primary question is, who am I? The answer is, zinc metal. Now, the riddle is framed to explain the two basic concepts of chemistry. Number one, common ion effect. Number two, solubility product. Now, what is common ion effect? We know that strong electrolytes undergo complete dissociation or ionization at any concentration. But while coming to weak electrolytes, except for the infinitely dilute solution, they undergo partial dissociation. And the ions formed by the partial dissociation remains in equilibrium with the undissociated salt. And now, if any strong electrolyte is added to the solution which contains an ion common to the ion formed by the dissociation of the weak electrolytes, in that case, concentration of this ion is increased and according to Lee Satellier principle, dissociation equilibrium is shifted towards left. That means the dissociation of this weak electrolyte is further suppressed and this is known as the common ion effect. Let's see this example, hydrogen sulfide which is a weak acid. It dissociates partially as H plus ion and sulfide ion. 
if we add hydrochloric acid which is a strong acid that means in acid media this H plus is acting as a common ion so this dissociation equilibrium of hydrogen sulfide is shifted towards left and that means the dissociation of hydrogen sulfide is suppressed and low concentration of sulfide ion will be formed. Similarly here, ammonium hydroxide partially dissociated as ammonium ion and hydroxyl ion. If you add ammonium chloride which is a strong electrolyte containing the common ion ammonia, then dissociation of this ammonium hydroxide is further suppressed. So this phenomenon is common ion effect. Now, coming to the solubility product. See, for sparingly soluble salt like silver chloride, silver chromate, barium sulfate, a very little amount of the salt get dissolved in water. And whatever little amount goes to the solution, they undergo complete ionization. And an equilibrium is established between the ions in the solution and the undissolved salt. Say AB is a sparingly soluble salt. Hmm? Very little amount gets dissolved in water and that amount undergoes complete ionization and the solution becomes saturated. And after ionization, it forms A plus ion and B minus ion. And these ions remain in equilibrium with the undissolved salt AB. Now, by applying the law of mass action, the equilibrium constant K is equal to molar concentration of A plus into molar concentration of B minus divided by molar concentration of AB. Now, by cross multiplication, K into AB is equal to molar concentration of A plus and molar concentration of B minus. Since very little amount of salt goes to the solution, the concentration of the undissolved salt remains constant. So this is one constant, this is also constant, both together gives another constant which we call solubility product denoted by Ksp. So, Ksp here or solubility product here it is equal to molar concentration of A plus into molar concentration of B minus. Now, definition of solubility product. Let us take this sparingly soluble salt AxBy, the small amount of this salt ionized as X amount X number of Ay plus and y number of bx minus from one molecule. Then the solubility product Ksp is equal to, see here, molar concentration of Ay plus to the power x into molar concentration of bx minus to the power y. That means product of the concentration of the ions where each ion is raised to the power equal to number of ions formed in the dissociation process from one molecule of the salt. That is the solubility product. Okay. Now, the solubility product of a particular salt is constant as a, at a constant temperature irrespective of the source from where the ions are produced and the total number of ions present. Number two, the solubility product principle, it is not only applicable to sparingly soluble salt but also applicable to soluble salts. And the most important one is that when the precipitation occurs. Precipitation occurs when the ionic product of the salt exceeds solubility product value at a particular temperature, then the precipitation occurs. So, this is solubility product concept. 
Now coming to the answers of the remaining question. Question number 2 was which gas is evolved and why? It is hydrogen gas. Why? The metals which are placed above hydrogen in the electrochemical series, they can release hydrogen gas from the acid. The position of zinc is above hydrogen in the electrochemical series. Question number 3. What compound is formed during my combination with sulphide? Obviously, it is zinc sulphide because zinc ion and sulphide ion, it gives the zinc sulphide. Question number 4. Why my combination is favored in alkaline medium but inhibited in acid medium? Now see, hydrogen sulphide is a weak acid which dissociate as H plus ion and sulphide ion. In acid medium, this H plus ion acts as a common ion which further suppress the dissociation of the weak hydrogen sulphide whereby low concentration of sulphide ion is formed. With this low concentration of sulphide ion, the ionic product of zinc and sulphide cannot exceed the solubility product of zinc sulphide at room temperature. That is, ionic product of zinc and sulphide is less than solubility product of zinc sulphide. So, no precipitation occurs. In alkaline medium, this hydroxyl ion combines with this H plus formed from the dissociation of hydrogen sulphide and form practically undissociated water molecule. Thereby, this H plus is removed from the medium and it is converted to undissociated water molecule. So, according to least atelier principle, dissociation equilibrium will be shifted towards right and more concentration of sulphide ion will be formed. Now, under this condition where more concentration of sulphide ion is formed, the ionic product of zinc and sulphide ion exceeds the solubility product of zinc sulphide and the precipitation occurs. So, in acid medium, ionic product does not exceed the solubility product of zinc sulphide. So, no precipitation occurs. Alkaline medium, it exceeds the solubility product. So, precipitation of zinc sulphide occurs. That is the reason in that uh, inorganic qualitative analysis, that is the analysis of cation, in the second group reagent also hydrogen sulphide gas in acid medium but zinc is not precipitated along with the second group cation that means that copper, cadmium, lead, arsenic, antimony, bismuth all these are precipitated as sulphide in acid medium but zinc remains in the solution because its ionic product under low concentration of sulphide does not exist the solubility product. And finally, zinc gets precipitated in the fourth group that is in alkaline medium H2S gas or hydrogen sulphide gas is passed. Now, this is our riddle number one. Send your valuable suggestion and comments to encourage me.